right so so far we discussed about distance displacement speed velocity average speed and average velocity and i have told you that when you are driving a bike and if any person ask you that what is the speed of the bike and at that moment what is the value seen the speedometer and if you tell the same value to a person and i i told you already that that is not a speed of the bike that is a instantaneous speed of the bike then what is instantaneous what is instantaneous speed instant instant means at that moment so in the speedometer as soon as you see the speedometer the the point in the speedometer shows 60 kmph that means that is the speed of the bike at that moment so instantaneous speeds are instantaneous velocities are nothing but speeds or velocities at that moment of time now how do you how can you find instantaneous speed or velocity um, and numericals are given based on that i'm going to draw a graph between distance on y axis and time on x axis and this is how the graph some some the graph some of the graph is like this so this is a path of your bike see this is the point for uh, time 1 second and this is the distance traveled say so distance traveled is 3 meters this is the 2 seconds say so distance traveled is 9 meters This is three seconds, and the distance traveled is thirteen meters. This is four seconds. So the distance traveled is twenty-five meters, like that. Some graph is drawn. Now, I have asked a question that what is the instantaneous speed at this point, point P? now how do you find the answer at the point at the point p what is instantaneous speed we know that speed is distance over time so we think that okay why can't i take a coincident distance and the coincident time Let's take distance by time maybe we'll get the answer no you are wrong whenever based on the graph i ask you to find instantaneous speed then you have to draw a tangent from that point a tangent from that point after drawing the tangent you have to take the slope of the tangent why is it slope because in mathematics you know that slope is nothing but y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 means y axis by x axis what is your y axis y axis is your distance what is your x axis you have time and the wonder is distance by time is nothing but speed so from the slope of this distance time graph you will get the speed so you have to find the slope of this line now the question is how do you find the slope of this line there is a method and the method i'm explaining here listen carefully so when this tangent is ab length try to draw a bigger longer tangent after drawing the tangent you draw you take a scale put a scale and draw a line which is horizontal to the time axis take a scale put it at the point a draw a line parallel to the distance axis now what happened both lines intersecting at point c now if you observe abc it is a triangle and when you get the triangle and i told you no y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 c y2 minus y1 is y axis y axis so ac by x2 minus x1 means nothing but bc so by finding using the scale by finding the bc length and ac length when you substitute here you will get the instantaneous speed at point p so this is what instantaneous speed at p you got it right now we discuss about uniform and non uniform motions 
what are these uniform and uniform motions sometimes if you observe the most of the vehicles on the road you feel that some bodies are moving with the constant speed some bodies are not moving with the constant speed i'll give another hint to you suppose you are in the bus closing your eyes and the bus is moving on the highway road and when you close your eyes still you're not feeling that you are in you are not in the motion that gives you a hint that your bus is moving with constant speed when you close your eyes and you feel that you are getting some jerks you are you are you are jumping from your seat you are falling towards your right towards your left then that tells you that your bus is not moving with constant speed it is moving with variable speed right so these are the human experiences but physics promise you that human experience can also be shown using the physics physical quantities let us discuss now now this topic is uniform and non uniform motions uniform and non uniform motions right first of all we will discuss about uniform motion let me write some values to you to get better understanding of this concept say a car is traveling on the road and it has covered some distances in particular interval of time i am writing some imaginary values say distance covered 0 meters in time 1 second and then is 5 meters in 2 seconds then is 10 meters in 3 seconds and then is 15 meters 4 seconds and at last 20 meters in 5 seconds say car has traveled or covered the distances in this time now if you observe this data table from 1 second to 2 seconds the distance traveled is 0 to 5 so the difference is 5 meters so if i take from 1 second to 2 seconds the distance traveled is 5 minus 0 you can ask the question the why i am taking 5 minus 0 because in this instance this is initial distance this is final distance so final minus initial by final time minus initial time 2 minus 1 so what is this this is 5 by 2 this is nothing but 2.5 meters per second this is what speed meters per second is a unit of speed now go for this one 3 seconds to 4 seconds again when i take 3 second to 4 second in this instant this is initial distance that is final distance so final minus initial 15 minus 10 by final time minus initial time 4 seconds minus 3 seconds so what happened here 5 4 minus 3 so one mistake so cut one mistake i have done 2 minus 1 to 1 ra algebra 2 ra sen akane continue repeat ha ikka cherpesi ivu raayal kada repeat take is what take one instance 1 second to 2 seconds so the distance traveled from 1 second to 2 seconds is 0 meters to 5 meters so distance traveled is 5 meters only so i will take 5 minus 0 why i have taken like that because in this instance this is final distance this is initial distance so final minus initial by final time minus initial time 2 minus 1 so what i have here 5 by 1 this is 5 meters per second and you guess meters per second means speed so we found speed now take the next instance from 3 seconds to 4 seconds in this instance this is final distance this is initial distance so 15 minus 10 by final time minus initial time 4 minus 3 so 5 by 1 again you got 5 meters per second and if you calculate for 4 second to 5 seconds here also without calculation i'm telling you we get v equals to 5 meters per second so what do you understand with this it tells you that at each and every seconds of the journey speed 
remain constant. So it is covering equal distances, equal distances, an equal interval of time, and it is and it is uniform motion. See, now I'm drawing a graph between distance on y-axis and time on x-axis. This is called distance time graph. Okay, popularly it is called ST graph. Okay, so on the time axis, I'm taking the intervals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, what happened to the unit? I'll write the unit like this t slash s, time in seconds, s slash m, distance in meters. Now, the distance I'm writing here 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, now you have to plot. Quickly plot 